this report, um, it's not new news, really. It's just a, a, an add-on news. We've been talking about, uh, we started talking about, you know, First Republic Bank last week, and we were predicting exactly what was going to happen uh, today. And uh, so here's the headline. Now, this is right off the presses. This is a brand new development. You'll see that the, the dates on these reports are, are all, you know, May 1st. And today, today is May 1st. This is all brand new news. All right, so let's take a look at the first headline. All right, J.P. Morgan Chase National Association, Columbus, Ohio, assumes all the deposits of First Republic Bank out of San Francisco, California. Notice that, boy, a lot of these banks, all these banks so far are coming out of San Francisco. Maybe there's a, a little clue we, we, we should be taking from that. And here's a little bit of information. So, First Republic assets include $173 billion in loans, $30 billion in securities, and $92 billion in deposits. So this is a big deal. This is the second largest bank failure uh, in uh, U.S. history, uh, the first one being uh, Washington Mutual back in the 2008 crisis. So this is a very big deal and a little bit scandalous. Let's take a look at uh, this guy here. Okay, so the FDIC and J.P. Morgan Chase, the bank, National Association are also entering into a loss share transaction transaction on single family residential commercial loans it purchased from the former First Republic Bank. Here is the important one. The FDIC as receiver and JP Morgan Chase Bank National Association will share in the losses and potential recoveries on the loans that they recovered. All right. So, what a sweet deal. Now, there were other offers from other banks uh, for uh, First Republic Bank. JP Morgan literally put in their bid uh, around one o'clock this morning, okay? And this announcement came out just a few hours before the market opened up. So let's think about this first. And I'm sure there's no corruption involved here. Absolutely no corruption. And I'm sure the regulators looked through this bid very carefully and they, they considered all the other bids and decided this was the best one. All right, so we'll get into that in, in a second with Rob because I really want to dig into, into that scandal. All right, now let's kind of remind ourselves, most people don't know this, but in 1994, there was a law passed where no single bank was allowed to have more than 10% of the total deposit base in the United States. Well, J.P. Morgan coming into today already had, guess what, 10% of the nation. So they legally should not be allowed to acquire these deposits, this bank. They've maxed out, according to law, the amount of money that they are allowed to have uh, in the bank. Now, of course, that is meant to avoid monopolies, right? That's the whole idea. That's the whole intent behind this law. Uh, but, you know, I guess, you know, I guess the laws don't matter anymore. I mean, I mean, who, the, the regulators uh, either know <laughs> they don't know what the law is or, or who, who cares? They probably don't expect people like me to know this stuff uh, and to uh, hold them to it. And... Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about, Rob, you want to come back in here? Okay, so, you know, this whole thing stinks to high heaven. Now, let's all keep in mind that the, this is, as far as I'm concerned, this is part of a plan to whittle our financial industry down to the top five or six banks. Now, we saw the favorable status that SBB Bank got. And now we're getting an, another bailout, a, a sweetheart deal with um, with this First Republic Bank. And, okay, J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan, other banks have put in bids, but they want J.P. Morgan. In addition to J.P. Morgan acquiring another $103 billion worth of deposits, get this, Rob, the Federal Reserve is giving them $13 billion just to do the deal. The, the FDIC is giving them $13 billion. It's not enough that they're giving them the bank, but they're throwing in another $13 billion. And add to this, that the, uh, as you saw in that uh, one press release, the FDIC is going to share in the potential losses of the bad debts that they got on the books, right? So, so they just reduced the risk to almost nothing for JP Morgan. But on the upside, JP Morgan gets all the profits. On any, you know, because all those loans that they that, that they took on, you know, uh, it, the, now the biggest uh, problem with these loans out there 
is the current state of interest rates uh, in the in the country. Well, if J.P. Morgan, you know, toughs it out for I don't know a year, two years, their interest rates could uh, somewhere along the way pull back in there. There could be a pivot, and those and 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 those assets that they just took over cheap, they could increase in value enormously. So they have virtually no downside because they share the risk with the FDIC, but but they get all the upside. So if things work out for JP Morgan with these loans, the FDIC doesn't get any of the profits. They only share, I mean, what a deal. Would you take that deal? I mean, if, <laughs> I mean, what a sweet deal. No, no risk and you get all the upside potential. So, uh, uh, so circling back to the big point on this and then another quick point is, you know, uh, there is a concerted effort right now to reduce our banking system down to a small number of banks. And in the crosshairs are the smaller to medium-sized banks. So any of you out there who are in the smaller, medium-sized banks, you should think really hard about having your assets in those banks. Because when they fail, they are almost certainly not going to get the sweetheart deal that J.P. Morgan got. Because they want to take care of the large banks, the big banks, the J.P. Morgans of the world, not the small ones. So reduce your exposure to your bank, put some of the money into gold and silver, and establish streams of passive recurring income. And one final point I want to throw in, in, in here, because it is relevant, and it really kind of grinds my gears, is there is a, a renewed push in Congress to, uh, to censor people like you and me, Rob, who are talking about these kind of events uh, on social media. And they're blaming what happened at SVB Bank and now with First Republic Bank on us, on social media, saying, hey, there wouldn't have been runs on these banks if these social media platforms were not, tell were not scaring the hell out of people. So in order to avoid that, we, we want to put muzzles on people out there who are telling the truth. So You know where that comes from? Oh. Would, GameStop. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's that's where that comes from. So the people um, on Reddit came together and said, you know what? Um, bad luck. This is what we're going to do. And you that that's you know what it comes down to, Ed. It comes to the the idea, the communist ideology, yeah, the Chinese Communist Party, and I, I can tie it all back to that pretty easily. And hey, where's Rob going with this? Isn't that a bit of a leap? Why is that communism? Well, the, the reality is the Chinese Communist Party are not really that scared of us as their adversaries in the West because they feel like that they can contain us. And if they couldn't contain us, they've got nuclear weapons to contain us with. But what they can't do is they can't contain their population. So the Chinese Communist Party and all communists, all socialists, fear insurrection from the inside out because they don't have enough forces, there's not enough military, there's not enough police to actually stop an uprising to take a government down. And they tried to do that in 1989 in Tiananmen Square, but it wasn't working. And they were so scared of 2,000 people inside of Tiananmen Square, or well, there was 10,000 people in there, wasn't there? Well, they killed like 2,000 of them, that they just brought out the tanks and the machine guns and mowed them all down. And it's like, well, you know, there's no uprisings here. We, we are firmly in charge. That's what's going on. And to your point of the... The government not wanting people in social media to be talking about these banking failures that kind of makes sense because we saw it happen really badly with gamestop and if that happens in the banking sector that can cause all sorts of chaos and, and problems there as well uh, uh, i'm sorry to interrupt but a little bit of a difference there and, and it's an important one we do have laws on the book they're called front running laws uh, mm. so, so i mean you know if if you want to you know, if you want to short a stock that had a huge, uh, you know, run up, you know, first you would take your position and then you would flood uh, news reports about how bad whatever it is to drive it down. Okay, that's illegal. And that's called that's front running. Of trading, right? That's front, right. Front that, 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 well, trading. it's manipulation, right? It's mm -hmm. it's it, and it, uh, and that is uh, fraudulent. And there are laws against that. That's a very specific, okay, um, uh, you know, law. Now you and I, we have no financial. Um, we don't. We don't benefit from the news reports that we make. Uh, mm. We put. We put out the truth uh, on things. Um, but for people who are trying to profit from spreading false information about, because look, a, a rumor and, and something like a GameStop. Mm -hmm.